Hi and welcome back. If you're new to the channel, my name is Vince. Thanks for stopping by. You're very welcome here indeed. So in a very recent study, researchers have used a huge database to find links between existing drugs and extending human lifespan. Only 14 of the more than 400 that were reviewed showed a positive correlation. One of the subfields in neuroscience was born from the idea that some drugs currently in use for various indications might actually slow aging. In recent years, we've seen such success with existing drugs in animal models. And there are links in the description below to the studies and to the articles I used to put this presentation together. For example, rapamycin, which is mostly used as an immune suppressant, is one of the strongest pro-longevity interventions in mice. But what about in people? Unfortunately, when we talk about rapamycin, there hasn't been a single lifespan clinical study in humans to date. Designing such a trial is difficult due to our species' remarkable longevity. Hence, our only current option is population studies of people who actually take those medicines. These epidemiological studies, although better than nothing, are open to all sorts of biases. One such study on metformin has caused a lot of debate in the longevity community. This is because it showed that diabetes patients who received the drug metformin lived longer than healthy people who did not receive it. Since then, another study has cast those results into doubt. Metformin also failed to increase lifespan in mice in a rigorous trial that was conducted as part of the Interventions Testing Program, also known as the ITP. But finally, a large-scale population study of associations between various drugs and human lifespan is out as a preprint. That means it's not yet been peer-reviewed. The authors of the study, which include the renowned geoscientist Alejandro Ocampo, used data from the UK Biobank, a huge repository of health data on over half a million British citizens. The UK Biobank contains drug prescriptions for more than 200,000 participants. That's more than 56 million prescriptions in total. This allowed the researchers to analyse the effects of 406 different drugs prescribed to at least 500 different patients. 169 of the drugs did not have any effect whatsoever on human lifespan. Most were predictably associated with a shorter lifespan. This phenomenon is pretty well understood. The deaths may have occurred because of the disease that the drugs were prescribed for, or even possibly because of the side effects of the drugs. However, 14 of the drugs appeared to positively influence human lifespan when compared to the health match controls. The research is controlled for major factors known to influence lifespan, those being current smoking status, cancer diagnosis, diabetes, gender, and the age of the participants at recruitment. One of the drugs was atorvastatin. This is one of the statins, a class of drug used to decrease the levels of cholesterol in the blood. Statins are believed to have a good safety profile and are generally considered by some to be one of modern medicine's biggest successes. Statins are also Big Pharma's most lucrative product. Statin sales hit 15.4 billion, that's billion with a B, in 2023, and sales are expected to hit 22 billion by 2032. Use of asovastatin was associated with a 9% less mortality risk, that's a hazard ratio of 0.91. Another winner was naproxen, a non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drug used to ease the symptoms of arthritis. It was associated with a 10% decrease in mortality risk. As we know, chronic inflammation is one of the hallmarks of aging and a driver of multiple aging processes. However, we cannot be sure that this is the reason that naproxen made the cut. Another anti-inflammatory drug on the list was Otomize or Otomize, a spray used to treat ear infections with three active ingredients, including steroids. Another well-known drug found to be associated with longer human lifespan was Viagra, with a 15% less mortality risk. Again, the researchers say they did not know the reason. It could be down to Viagra's vessel diluting activity or even a case of reverse causation. In that, healthy people are more interested in having sex. 
Viagra, of course, is only prescribed to the male population, but women had their winners too. These were the estrogen-related drugs, estroderm, vagifirm, estriol, and estradiol. They seem to have a profound effect, decreasing mortality risk by 33%, 27%, 26%, and 25% respectively. Recent research has shown that the menopause and dwindling levels of estrogen associated with it are linked to poorer health, which is improved by hormone replacement therapy known as HRT. Strangely, 17-alpha-estradiol, a non-feminizing estrogen, has produced notable life extension in male, but not in female mice. The last three drugs linked to less mortality risk were the contraceptive Marvalon and two vaccines, Avazim and Revaxis. The authors specifically note that metformin did not have any effect on lifespan. The study does not mention rapamycin, probably because it's very rarely prescribed. The researchers also looked at classes of drugs. Statin, as a class, were negatively associated with mortality risk. And even more so with the SGLT2 inhibitors, a class of anti-diabetes drug with a 36% reduction, but in a smaller sample than was used for metformin. The most popular commercial SGLT2 inhibitor is Jardians. Another drug of this family, canagliflozin, led to life extension in mice, again in an ITP study. Population studies like this are notoriously hard to interpret and can show correlation, but not necessarily causation. The research is controlled for just a handful of confounding factors, but many more factors were quite possibly also accounted for. However, as the data gets bigger and better, we should see more studies that point to existing drugs currently in use as possible GIRO protectors. As you may know, if you follow the channel, I do take metformin, not necessarily as a longevity supplement, but because my blood sugar levels over the last three or four years have been bordering around pre-diabetic. So I take it now more as a preventative measure so I don't actually get type 2 diabetes. I'd be interested to see what you think about these studies. Let me know what you think in the comments below, specifically about metformin and also rapamycin. 